Good day to everybody tuning in to this sermon on Uzzah and the Ark. Now this story of Uzzah and the Ark is found in two places in our Old Testament. 2 Samuel chapter 6 verses 1 to 11 and 1 Chronicles 13 verses 1 to 14. But before we get into the story of Uzzah touch, touching the ark and getting struck down, I would like to kind of do a quick overview of the history of the Ark of the Covenant with the people of God. The Ark was a golden plated wooden chest. It held a copy of the Ten Commandments. It also had four rings on each corner so the acacia wood poles could carry the Ark. It was where the Lord spoke to his people and it was where the presence of the Lord in the Old Testament dwelt on earth. And we see this in Exodus 25, verse 22. In 1 Samuel, though, the ark dwelt in a building or a tabernacle in Shiloh. This was not the temple. This could have been a, a building constructed or it was the tabernacle. But we know that the ark was in Shiloh. And the ark was under the care of a man named Eli. He was a wicked priest and he had two extremely wicked sons, Hophni and Phinehas. They served along with Eli before the Lord. Eli's sons were wicked because they committed sexual immorality and as well they treated the offerings of the Lord with contempt. Eli as well was complicit with them in their behavior. He allowed it to happen. The Lord punished Eli and his two sons. They all died on the same day. And while that happened, in 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 11, the ark of God was captured by the Philistines. And the ark of God went on a journey from Shiloh to the first place, Ashdod. In 1 Samuel chapter 5, verse 1 to 7, it was placed in the pagan god's temple whose name was Dagon. The Philistines put this Ark of Covenant there. And the Lord reveals to the Philistines that Dagon is no god at all. Dagon falls before the Ark of the God, and Dagon is eventually more or less desecrated. The people of Ashdod are in terror that the Ark of the Covenant is here. The people of Ashdod get tumors. And they know that the hand of the Lord is against them. So they say, we want this Ark out of here. And it lands in a place called Gath. In 1 Samuel 5, verse 8 and 9. The Lord afflicts the people of Gath. And they want it gone. And then it lands in 1 Samuel chapter 5, verse 10 to 11, in a place called Ekron. And the people of Ekron are in a deathly panic, and the hand of God was heavy upon the people of Ekron, and they were struck with tumors. Then it is moved to Beth Shemesh in 1 Samuel 6, verse 1 to 20. And some of the men of Beth Shemesh, Shemesh look upon the ark, and they're struck down. Here we see that the presence of God and the ark is a holy thing. And it came in the midst of people who were unholy and they felt God's judgment and really feared God and His holiness. In chapter 7 of 1 Samuel 1-2, kiriath Jiriam in the house of Avinadab. And this is where the ark stays till we hear about it in 2 Samuel chapter 6. David wants to move the ark from Avinadab's house, from the place of Kiriath-Jerium. But David does two things wrong in 2 Samuel chapter 6. First, he does not have the Levites carry the ark. And we see that he acknowledges that mistake in 1 Chronicles 15 verse 13. They didn't carry it at the first. The next mistake is that he carried the ark of God on a new cart instead of not using the poles. And he acknowledges that in 1 Chronicles 15.15. In 2 Samuel 6, verse 5, there's a great celebration with David and the other people of God. But something 
horrible happens. We hear that the ark stumbles in 2 Samuel 6 verse 6. Because it's being carried on a cart. It's not being carried properly. And a man named Uzzah reaches out to support the ark. We know that Uzzah is likely not a Levite because David admits that no Levites were involved in the transportation of this Ark of Covenant in 1 Chronicles 13. And it seems like kind of just a good thing to do to hold it and support the Ark of the Covenant. But in 2 Samuel 6 verse 7, the anger of the Lord burns and the Lord strikes Uzzah down and he dies. And the Lord strikes him down because of his heir, is what the Hebrew says, or it's called an irreverent act, or it's called a negligence for God's holiness, or Uzzah acted in haste in doing something he shouldn't have done. He rebelled against God, and the Lord punishes him for his sin. Now, some think this act is too harsh, but this passage teaches us the holiness of God. And after Uzzah is struck down, David gets, gets angry with God. But after that, in 6 verse 9, David fears the Lord. David has just seen the holiness of God, and his response is to fear the Lord. How does this small passage in 2 Samuel and 1 Chronicles apply to our life? The first thing we need to know about even all the stories of the Ark of the Covenant is God is a holy God. We see this many, many passages in the Old Testament. Really, it's one of the dominating themes in the Old Testament, God's holiness. But we also see it in the New. For instance, Revelation 4.8, God is holy, holy, holy. When John's in the presence of God, that's what he hears the angels say. But also in Revelation 15 verse 4, You alone are holy, is declared about the Lord. Here we see in the narrative of Uzzah, the holiness of God, His perfection. He demands perfection. But as well, the holiness of God... We see that in the cross of Christ. This story points us forward to the Lord Jesus because we all, like Uzzah, have acted irreverently. We've acted in haste with regards to God. We've made errors or sins in the eyes of God. We're all like Uzzah. We deserve to be struck down. But Jesus Christ goes in our place and bears the wrath of God. He bears the wrath of a holy God because He was that perfect in sinless sacrifice. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 says that Jesus bears the curse of the law in our place. The curse of the law is punishment, but Jesus bore it in our place and he gives us his righteousness. Today, if you're outside the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to know that the punishment that Uzzah experienced, we all deserve. But there is grace and mercy and pardon and we can have our sins forgiven. We can be made right in God's eyes or justified just as if we have never sinned. But it only comes through Christ. If you don't know Christ, trust in Him. Embrace Him and His grace. And you can experience eternal life. Life everlasting with Jesus Christ. Amen.